We'd like to welcome you to the Mecole One Show. I'm your host, Cricket. I have a guest today. Let's welcome poet Deacon Charles Peterson. Good evening. How are you? Amen. I want to thank you, Deacon Charles, for just being a blessing to the Mecole One Show, for coming out and just spending time with us. And I want to start off with, because you have several books. So I want to start off with one of the books that you made a statement and it starts off like this. The poet's love for creativity writing through his poetry is a reflection of his passion for the written word. And having more time since retirement has given him a better focus on his creativity for he believes more often than not that the pen is mightier than the sword. That was amazing to me because as a poet, when the pen becomes mightier than a sword, let's start off with that and just explain to us how is the pen mightier mm. than a sword? Well, by all means, I give all honor to God. And um, some people might think of the sword as the sword of God uh, the, because God will come as, with a sword. But uh, the, the sword I'm talking about is the, the sword that man wills, that uh, he will use war and he'll use other mechanism to uh, conquer and to establish his, his rule and his authority. But uh, a written word can go a lot longer than a sword. A shiny sword will rust in its own due season. But uh, the word of God or the, the written word will last for centuries and centuries beyond. And so uh, an opinion and, and uh, a belief can be carried forth uh, and truth can be carried forth as you, as you pen it. Amazing, the, uh, amazing. You, but you amazing mighty man of God. Um, when I saw you at one of the events in South Haven in the Af you was in the African-American um, show and I just knew I wanted to use you it wasn't able to this year because of the pandemic. So we're just praying for something else. But I got into contact with your first lady. And I know, I just want you to speak a little bit about the church, your first lady, your pastor, because they have made a great influence in your life, in your ministry, and in your poetry. So just share a little bit about your church home. Well, uh, being Deacon Peterson, is uh, being a, a servant, willing to do as God would have me to do, and to strive to be a more effective witness and a, and a, a, a better fisher of men. <laughs> I strive hard to, to support my pastor as the chairman of the deacon ministry at Gospel Tabernacle, which I've been there for about 40 years. And uh, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not something that you just Throw out lightly, I'm I'm a servant. No, uh, I am a servant. <laughs> you know, the true and living God, an humble individual striving. I didn't say weak individual. Humble does not mean weak. It means someone who's willing to stand the test of time. So I strive to to be a servant. And uh, my pastor, Pastor Henry Henry Lee Allen Sr., is a awesome young man. I say young man because I got him by a few months, but uh, he's an awesome young man, and he's a, he's a God-fearing man, and he's forever uh, bringing his wisdom that God has blessed him with to the table. He's letting us know that, that uh, no matter who's in office, <laughs> as far as we look at today, who's in office, Christ is still the king. You know, he's letting us know that it's, it's not about um, favoritism or it's not about race it's a uh, it's about salvation and that's what we strive to do let others know that it's it's uh not about the uh, the poet would say it's not about the time you're given it's what you do with the time you gave so we strive to uh to bring others to christ and to lift up his his name above all the situations and circumstances that we may face amen and, uh, as for my pastor and first lady they are unique people they are two two spirits that are, are dwell together. I've known them both since we were children. 
I've known them both since we was in high school and grade school. And uh, uh, to be able to, to work with them and, and to follow his lead, I'm, I'm privileged and I'm and I call, considered blessed because they I seen the struggles that they went through as I was struggling to get through. <laughs> so we all have come down the road together. And so it's no problem uh, to uh, these to continue to strive to be and do what thus says the Lord with, with uh, and to hold on to what what he's teaching us. Amen. So he's not only an awesome preacher, he's an excellent teacher. And uh, and I can't I can't kick against that. <laughs> Amen. Okay. Amen. Gospel Tabernacle. I'll say one more thing, Gospel Tabernacle is home. So uh, people I live in another community ask me, well, why you go all the way over there to, to, to worship? I say, because I know the spirit dwells there. Amen. 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 This election has been um, very emotional for a lot of us, but um, just like you said, God is the head, the tail, and the core of our lives, and we know where our help comes from. So we have in this season, in which in every season, even as a Christian, we got to trust God. Amen. Trust Him and believe Him Amen. that He will provide. He's a that's provider. Yeah, that's right. At what age did you? realize you were a poet hmm. well i dwell on that question and i i see it uh i was uh at the age of about 14 or 15 when i first started hearing the music and you know and and you know as you grow start to getting up and you can as my old man used to say you can smell yourself <laughs> you start thinking about uh the music and the lyrics that was coming and what they meant and what they were saying. And somewhere I had the notion that I could be a, a songwriter. So I set out on that journey, unbeknownst to a whole lot of people, started writing jingles and, and, and poetry. And um, I was uh, in, in junior high school and uh, you know, I, I put aside a whole lot of things that, that I was writing. But uh, as I grew a little bit older, I realized that, that I heard a song that that said um, there's a message in the music and I'd heard the song quite a few times before but I had missed the lyrics that said it was a message in the music and so I, I looked back and I wondered how many others had missed the uh, the messages by listening to the rhythm of life and so I decided that right there that I needed to I had something to say and I wanted it not to be missed by the rhythm of the music. So I decided to become a poet and start writing poetry. And that way uh, it would be out there in the front. Amen, amen. You have several books out. Faith yes. of the Belief. What was the motivation when writing the book? Hmm. Well, Faith of the Belief is, a, is an evangelistic effort. It, is, it was, uh, and following God's God's word, it says, he said, go ye therefore making disciples of all nations, baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe whatsoever I have commanded of thee, and lo, I am with thee always, even to the end of the age. Now that's uh, uh, the gospel according to the Apostle Matthew, 28th chapter, 18 to the 20th verse, which is the, which is the, um, we call that the Great Commission. So the Great Commission teaches us that we need to go out and let others know and tell them. And so having been a motivational speaker and, and, a, um, and a writer and a poet, I found that as a platform to go forward and let others know that, that uh, uh, time is winding down for the children of man. We must make our choices and choose to be uh, what God would have us to be and do what God have us to do while we're here. So that was my motivation to, to, to evangelize what God had gave to me uh, through the gift that he gave me in, in writing and, and poetry. And your work is found on amazon.com so they can get yes, yes. purchase your books and everything. You use a lot of acronyms in your writings. Mm -hmm. 
and it's amazing so that you have created all these acronyms which one is your favorite and why well faith of the believer is a uh was like i said the the motivation of, for my writing was to open to create something just for christianity just for the lord and uh to to open the eyes of the children of man before they're harvested by minds of, of destruction and 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 being that it speaks of salvation faith and salvation and one of the greatest blessings that he gave me was one of the uh acrostics that that i created that was three-dimensional. When I say three-dimensional, I speak of a poem. I speak of a crustic with the first letter of each sentence and a crustic with the first word of each sentence. Okay, and, and the one that stands out because it took me some four or five years to create was called, it's called um, Hope Everlasting. And Hope Everlasting, the first letter of each sentence says, T H E B L O O D L I N E, which spells the bloodline. And the first word says, the hope eternal believes love ordained our destiny. The hope eternal believes that love ordained our destiny. Life interceded never ends. Okay. And uh, it's called hope everlasting. So it, 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 was a, it was a challenge to do so. I, I you know, I, I go to school and I teach young people how to write with acrostics, and and uh, but it was a, a major challenge to bring it together all together because when you write an acrostic, it's got to relate to the work, totally relate to the work, and so uh, it took me a while to to bring it all together. But it's one of my greatest efforts, I believe. <laughs> It is. It's, your books are amazing. I have the faith of the believer, and I just went through it. That's why I'm going to pick my favorite. So I'll let you pick your favorite. That's just a lot of acronyms. I love them all. <laughs> so when I ask this question, I'm going to let him pick his favorite. And you did, and you told us it took five years to create. So that was, you know, and how it dealt with the bloodline. Yeah. That was amazing right there. Right there. That's a testimony dealing with your mm -hmm. blood dealing with revelation over your bloodline. That is amazing. You well, the bloodline that the bloodline that I speak of in that in that poem is that Christ came down through 42 generations through the bloodline. And he came down through 42 generations and intervened in mankind that we may have a right to eternal eternal life. And uh he came down in his coming, he brought with him salvation for for us throughout beyond our sins amen amen but it's still the bloodline that's Whether it's your bloodline or jesus bloodline <laughs> the bloodline the bloodline it's powerful oh Did yes it is but go on and correct me go on and correct me <laughs> I'm just, yes, I'm, i wasn't correcting you i was just <laughs> I know. but the bloodline is powerful oh yes it is oh yes it is we have the seeds. No other man would have done that for us. We're not even worthy for That's me right. to sacrifice my life right. on a cross and believe for the generations and generations. He I loved believe. us unconditionally. unconditionally. And as Christians, we should know how much love that you can't compare. You can't compare. Can't compare. No. And you can't you can't compare it. You can't earn it. And then you you can do to buy it. You right. Know, it's yeah, we we got to look at some things and say, well, except by the grace of God, that's saying I, you know, you say I could be in, in, in any situation, but God is blessed. Yeah, so not by my hard work, not by my, my good intentions, not by uh, any wealth that I may ever, ever acquire. Yeah, but Amen. by his grace and mercy. You have created a lot of community programs. Share with us some of the programs you have created for the community. Well, uh, if you look at your calendar, you, you can say it's, it starts with Dr. Martin Luther King. I've been on many of his programs and I've created Dr. Martin Luther King programs where I have poems entitled King, The Vision, uh, 
uh, what would Dr. King say in the cycle? You know, those poems like that I would do at his pro uh, for a program uh, in, in his honor. Uh, I've went to many schools and many different uh, counties uh, and even a couple of colleges uh, and, and spoke about black history. And uh, I have black history programs where I did, uh, uh, spoke at Michigan State a couple of times. And I, I've, uh, I did a program last year at uh, uh, Kalamazoo Valley Community Colleges and, and um, uh, where I do I can do 10 to 15 poems about black history off the top of my head. And uh, so I go to schools and I talk to them about drugs, guns, and alcohol, where I can do about 20 poems off the top of my head, talking to young people about keeping their lives in line and, and knowing that it don't take but one time and it don't have to be a whole lot. It could just be a little bit and uh, it could change your whole life. And um, I've done, um, um, programs memory grade school students. I, I was a, a mentor at my high school in Colbert. Uh, as uh, I went back and, and I taught grade school people, young, young people about how to write poetry and, and to let them know that they've been listening to poetry all their, li all their lives. And, and some of them didn't understand that a nursery rhyme is but a poem. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And so uh, Jack and Jill went up the hill, you know, it was, uh, it's like epic poetry. And, and so there was a lot of things that they was, they, they found that they realized that they was uh, uh, taught poetry at a very young age. So uh, I tried to entice them to, to take the pen in hand and, and to create. And um, so um, I worked on a self-awareness program to let them know that, uh, you know, the loudest voice in the crowd is not always the one you want to follow. <laughs> and, uh, you know, what's your perspective and how much you want to do what you want to do compared to what others think you should do. So, so self-awareness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just want to say thank you again for being our guest on the Nicole One Show. Truly a blessing. Hallelujah. Um, in closing, can you close us out with a, one of your poems, one of your favorite poems? Okay. Um, one of my favorite poems is, it incorporates a whole lot of what all the other ones say. And uh, as faith of the believer, it's, it, 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 it's that faith that gives you the, the uh, responsibility to make the right choices. Okay, by faith, I make the right choice for my soul and my salvation. And so, um, the captain of my soul, and of my soul. I'm not here by chance. I'm blessed to live with voice. The creator of the universe designed me. Master of the heavens gave me choice. Of all the blessings that I endow, my right of choice is my greatest gift. Fate shall overcome me someday, I know not how. I know, though, who I'll spend eternity with. Am I fearful of the major choices I made, the decisions and direction I chose? Captain my fate, my Lord, has long been my prayer. I choose to believe because he rose. My major choice aligns my fate, allows me to captain my will, Soul in line with God's command, for he is in control still. Amen. Amen. Oh, did I, I mention that there's an acrostic that goes with that? No, you did not. Oh, I Share. thought I'd just throw that in there. The first word of each sentence says, I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. My, my, my. Motivation. Well, the reason that 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 that's so important is that God gave us the right of choice. And my pastor say, if you want to go to hell, he'll open the door for you. <laughs> but if you it's your choice and you have a right to make it, he won't force you to love him or, or to expect uh, and respect him and obey him. But if you choose to do so. 
then you're using your right of choice to determine your place in eternity. So we are locked in time until we leave here and eternity is ours to share. So um, that's the, the importance of that work is that we have a right of choice and we need to use that right for the right purpose while we're here. Amen. Amen, Deacon. Amen. Deacon Peters Sr. want to say thank you again for being our guest. It was a privilege and an honor to have you, mighty man of God. Just want to say thank you again. And I always close with a prayer. Father God, right now, just in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for Deacon Charles' life. We thank you for the vision that you have implanted in his belly, Father God. We thank you for his poems that have blessed and uprooted the nation, Father God, that have educated, encouraged, and uplifted the people, Father God. Thank you for every vision and provision you have provided. We ask that for increase in vision, increase in provision, yes. Father God. Yes. and community resources, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. We ask that you continue to bless his family, bless his wife, Father God, bless the ministry you have placed in her belly, Father God, bless his children from his children to the grandchildren. Every generational seed, cover them with the blood of Jesus, Father God. We ask these many blessings in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen.